Today I'm going to be doing the picture this book tag. I was tagged by Charlie Brooke. Um, the originals were created by Spread Book Joy and Shelly Swearingen. I will link all three videos down below so go check them out. Um, yeah, when I do book tags, as always, my computer in my lap, that's why I'm looking down. I can't see, so it really can't be further away from that if I have to actually read the questions and everything. Okay, so there are eight questions. The first one is Love You Forever, written by Robert Munch and illustrated by Shelia McGraw. I will show all the picture books over here before I talk about the actual book that I'm discussing. Name a book you imagine you'll love forever. For this, I went with we Are Okay by Nina LaCour. This is... I always feel hesitant calling this YA because the characters are like in college. <laughs> They're like 18, 19. But basically YA. Um, contemporary about a girl whose grandfather has died and her, she kind of like ran away from home, ran to college a little bit early and just sort of avoided her best friend and kind of their relationship fell apart and it's about them rekindling that friendship and it's really beautiful it's really gorgeously written i adore nina lacour like this is the book i recommend for people who want to try ya as adults but like haven't read ya before or are hesitant because i think it's just like a really really lovely really beautifully written book i can't imagine ever being in a world where i don't love this because i've i've read it like three times or something and every time it's just like it blows me away like it just gets better um yeah this book makes me sob uncontrollably and i love it question two alexander and the terrible horrible very bad day wasn't it very bad no good day i don't remember i i have this book though i love this book um written by judith bjorst and illustrated by ray cruz which books or comforting things do you turn to when you're having a bad day for me, that's definitely contemporary YA. Um, contemporary YA is my comfort zone. It's kind of like when I'm sad, when I'm upset, when I'm stressed, I want to pick up a contemporary YA that's just like really good, um, that makes me happy. Recently, I was having a stressful day at work, so I downloaded Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, which is historical fiction technically. Um, it's set in like 98, but like realistic YA at the very least um yeah and it was just really good and it was like exactly what I needed that day and it made me feel better but in general just anything that's like contemporary YA especially when I've read the author before so I know I'm going to like it like I know it's going to be like a good just compelling read is my my comfort zone for when I'm sad question three the very hungry caterpillar by Eric Carle which book series character sparked your hunger for reading? Um, I don't know like an exact answer for this because I was pretty much always reading. Like my parents reading to me when I was a kid and then I kind of moved on to like the little, like very little, very young middle grade chapter books that are like barely chapter books and just like never stopped reading. So I'm going to like hesitantly say Charlotte's Web just because that's the first book that I remember like actively loving. Um, I remember my parents reading that to me. I remember like reading it on my own or just like flipping through the illustrations when I was too young to read. I had a really like gorgeous like big hardback copy of it that was like illustrated and it was beautiful. I don't have it here. It's like at my parents house still but it was it was a really beautiful book and just I remember really really loving that one. Um, and it's like, I can't say anything older that's like YA or adult because like by that point, like I was reading voraciously, like since I was a child. So like, there's nothing that kind of got me back into reading or anything. It just never stopped. Question four, Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. What's the most unusual book you've ever read? For this, I'm going to say Wheatsy Bat by Francesca Leah Block. It is a YA book. Um, published in the late 80s about a girl named Wheatsy Bat and her best friend and his boyfriend, her best friend named Dirk, his boyfriend named Doug, 
and her boyfriend named Very Special Agent Man. It is a weird book. I do not understand it. I always, I've reread it like one or two times and I just, I don't understand that book. Like I don't, I don't understand the purpose. I don't understand what it's doing. I don't know if I am entirely missing the point. People love it, so I must be missing the point. But like, I, I genuinely do not know. It's just a very strange book. It's just, I don't understand what's going on in that book. But I know, because I knew people growing up like who read it, like when I, I read it in middle school for the first time and I had friends who read it in middle school at the same time. They're like, oh my God, I love this. This book speaks to me. And I'm like, what speaks to you? Like not in a judgy way, just, I genuinely do not understand. It's like the weirdest thing I've ever read. I think I'm just far too literal for that book. Question five, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. What is your favorite book featuring the natural world? For this, I have to say Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. This is a nonfiction book about hiking Mount Everest. It's really great. Um, it's also really sad. It's basically like the deadliest year of Mount Everest's history. A lot of people died. Like a lot of characters in that book died and it was just really like tragic. Um, but it's also a lot about like the natural side of things. Like what hiking Mount Everest is like, what it takes to do it. It's really interesting. I don't read a lot of like natural books. Natural, that's a weird way to phrase that, but you know what I mean. I don't read a lot of books about nature. So like John Krakauer is kind of the closest that I get and Into Thin Air is just really really fantastic. It's so great. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, you like hiking mountains, you like Everest, you like wilderness survival stories, great book. I actually have a copy but I couldn't find it so like that's annoying. I'll have to edit it in. Question six, Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown and illustrated, oh, it doesn't say by who. Um, probably should have Googled that. Do you read at bedtime? Do you read to someone else at bedtime? And did anyone ever read to you at bedtime? Okay, one by one, <laughs> I sometimes read at bedtime. It depends. I wake up very early for work and earlier when I'm working both my jobs, so reading before bedtime sometimes happens and sometimes I just fall asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. And when I say as soon as, I mean like within seconds. It's kind of disturbing actually. Um, I do generally like to read before bed. It's just, I live in a world of sleep deprivation where that doesn't happen. Um, so it's kind of 50-50 on like, I like to, but do I always? Not so much. Um, do I read to anyone else? No, I don't have children. Um, my cats would not stick around long enough for me to read to them. Um, so no. Um, and did anyone ever read to you at bedtime? Yes, absolutely. My parents did like all the time, like probably even when I was like too old for that and should have been reading it to myself. Like my father was, well, both my parents, but like, I, I specifically remember my father doing it a lot and just like, or reading to me like even reading like little chapter books to me like the borrowers when I was like a little bit too young to be reading that myself but like was like mentally capable of following a story like that so yeah like constantly all the time in my childhood and then seven guess how much I love you by Sam McBratney and illustrated by Anita Jerem who had the biggest influence on you as a reader my father um he just read to me a lot all the time like my mother did too i don't want to like come across like i'm saying anything negative about her she did as well like all the time but i do remember a lot of the time my father doing it and i think that might have been because i had a younger brother who was like a couple years younger than me and would have been like a baby when i first started remembering this so like that might have to do <laughs> that might have something to do with it but um yeah my father i remember him like reading things to me and like influencing my taste because I would ask for something like I would ask for him to read me the borrowers and he'd be like oh no I don't want to read that and then pick something else and be like we're reading this we're gonna like this you're you're gonna like it and just like I remember a lot of things like that and um I remember like reading with him when I was growing up like 
and like exchanging books with him or like taking his recommendations like even today like we don't read tons of the same things because I definitely read more like I don't say I read a lot of romance because like you know obviously on this list like I'm reading like random non-fiction and like some YA some like serious things like I don't know I read a variety so but I, I do like take his recommendations and he's he's a writer himself so it is just like we still talk about like books and writing and reading so yeah like my father to be succinct <laughs> and then the final question the giving tree by shel silverstein which book or set of books would you give to an emerging reader reader or which book have you given as a gift more than once so i can answer more of the second question um the book that I have gifted many, many times, The Unseen World by Liz Moore. If I've bought you books, I have probably bought you this book. Um, I don't know how many copies of this book I have bought, but it's got to be like more than six because I just, I love this book so much and I think it's just such a good book and it has like such wide appeal. Um, Like it's got like a touch of sci-fi, it's got a touch of historical fiction, it's this really great character story of this young girl whose single father is diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's but at the same time like he works for a university in like a computer lab he's like a professor type person and he's very eccentric and like homeschools her and she's just kind of dealing with him his early dementia and like the early stages of that and it's really really well done um this is a fantastic book so like I do recommend it a lot maybe not so much for like emerging readers because it's kind of slow paced and kind of like lengthy and dense but like it is a really wonderful book that like I just gift constantly <laughs> so because I was tagged for this I do want to tag people just continue it going I don't know who's done this tag so if you have done it and I tag you I apologize and as always if you if I don't tag you feel free to do it um hey spleen just like you watched this video and wanted to do it that counts as a tag in my books so <laughs> I'm going to tag novel novels and cats and camera I will link both of them down below they're fantastic channels so definitely go check them out as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.